Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green ramp deck titled Jadzi's Jaunt as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And it's a deck built around the Jadzi Oracle of Archivios, the powerful 8-mana 5-5 legendary human wizard. We can discard a card to return Jadzi to our hand, so that's a bit of built-in protection against removal. And has a very powerful magecraft ability, saying whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, we can reveal the top card of our library. If it's a non-land card, we can cast it by paying one mana rather than paying its mana cost and if it's a land card we can put it onto the battlefield which also means we can potentially chain together a whole bunch of spells that we can all cast for one mana thanks to Jansi's magecraft ability and then we also have the flip side the journey to the oracle a four mana sorcery that lets us put any number of land cards from our hand onto the battlefield and then if we control eight or more lands we can discard a card and if we do return a journey to the oracle to its owner's hand and we're going to be using both halves of this card as we'll have have plenty of ways to use those extra lands from journey to enable a landfall and love it or hate it our win condition is going to be skewed swarm the three mana one one insect with landfall letting us generate a one one green insect creature token when a land enters a battlefield under our control but if we control six or more lands instead we make a token that's a copy of skewed swarm instead so that's very quickly going to get out of hand and exponentially grow to take over the board and the one one tokens can also protect our life total by chum blocking ground creatures so that buys us more time to set up our powerful late game until we eventually overwhelm the opponent with our 1-1s. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we also have the full playset of Opt as a cheap cantrip to scry one and draw a card. Great way to enable Magecraft for Jotzi. And we have another Magecraft card here at 2 mana, Quandrix Apprentice, a 2-2 with Magecraft letting us take a look at the top 3 cards of our library. And then we can reveal a land card from among them and put it into our hand and the rest goes on the bottom. So Apprentice is great for helping us hit our land drops every turn and potentially stock up a few extra lands in hand, which we can then put in play using Journey to the Oracle so that can give us a nice mana boost and also a great way to potentially enable landfall a whole bunch with Skewed Swarm maybe even in the same turn where we play Skewed Swarm so the opponent doesn't get a chance to take out some of our Skewed Swarms instead then we also have the full play set of Lotus Cobra as another powerful mana engine. Two mana, two one with a landfall, letting us make one mana of any color. So great with our fetch land, Fabled Passage, but also great with any other effects that put additional lands in play. So also very nice with the journey to the Oracle. And then we do need a little bit of interaction to stay alive, which is why we have the full play set of Into the Royal as a cheap bounce spell, which we can also kick for an additional one and a blue, in which case we get to draw a card as well. Then at 3 mana we've got a full playset of Cultivate as an excellent ramp card, puts a land into play and one into our hand. And then we've got our 4 copies of Skewed Swarm and 2 copies of Ingenious Mastery, which we can potentially cast for 2 in a blue, although then the opponent gets to scry 2 and make 2 treasures, so instead we're usually casting this as a big X spell, so we can sink all our mana into drawing a bunch of extra cards. And then we've got four copies of Eureka Moment for Mana Instant that lets us draw two cards and then put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield. So a great way to enable landfall multiple times. And then of course Jansi Oracle of Arcavios. And of course Journey to the Oracle also very useful in this deck, especially alongside Quandrix Apprentice and our various landfall creatures. And then we have 26 lands total, so a lot of lands, but we do want to have access to a lot of lands, especially for Apprentice, so we have a better hit rate, and so Eureka Moment can consistently put extra lands in play. So we've got 8 basic islands, 6 basic forests, do need a lot of basics to search up with cards like Cultivate, and of course our 4 copies of Fabled Passage, which can help us enable landfall twice with just one land. And then we've got our blue-green pathway for a bit of mana fixing. And then four copies of Castle Garenbrig, which might seem a little bit out of place, but it's still useful for ramping into Jotzi a turn sooner. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand as long as we can hit our third land drop. I'll try it. And then we can always use Into the Royal with Apprentice in play to find land three if needed. Opponent on blank green with Gigantha's companion. Alright, ideally we just hit our land drop naturally. Hunt for specimens, another pest deck. So at the very least we can bounce the token to trigger apprentice and find a land that way. Alright, that's even better. 
So we'll cultivate for now. Prentice finds a land. And we're off to the races. So, if we can, we want to save Scoot Swarm for a turn where we can play it and make a copy of the Scoot Swarm itself right away. So, the opponent can't easily remove it. With her Bloom Apprentice into Valentin. She can potentially make some pests as well. All right, Mastery is going to be a nice curve topper. So, for now, we can Eureka Moments. And put an extra line in play. We'll go with the uh, island here. And then we can still into the royal if needed. And then next turn I can play my Scoot Swarm. So we'll wait and see what the opponent does next. Alright, Lobstroke Beast triggers Apprentice. So what are they planning to do this turn? Might be a Plum the Pest turn, or they might just play Pest Summoning, in which case I'm happy bouncing the Apprentice. They do have a response, so they have an instant in hand here. Might be a Village Rites. But they've played land for the turn, and they don't have green mana, so they can't replay Apprentice at least. And this will grab a Forest. Sadly, don't have a Fabled Passage in hand, which would have been nice with Double Skew Swarm. And the opponent plays their Pest Summoning, makes two more 1-1s. One well, there's Fabled Passage. And then we're happy to pick up more lands with Apprentice in case we find Jotzi to put all these lands in play. And then... I'll wait on sacking the Fable Passage, but probably gonna do so end of turn. And then does the Apprentice attack. Yeah, I'm a little bit scared of a Plum the Pests here. So they might just take it. Alright, we'll pass. We can make four more Scoot Swarms end of turn. And then next turn maybe cast a big Ingenious Mastery. It's going to be an eye twitch. And I'll fetch here. So the card we want to find is Jotzi. Mostly for the journey half. Into the Royal, can bounce Apprentice again. Could also Mastery for 3 mana if we want to. So we have a lot of options. Probably just play Kicked into the Royal. Bounce Apprentice, opponent's gonna maybe Plum in response. And then Fable Passage is great with our Scoot Swarm. They could fizzle into the royal by sacking the apprentice itself to the plum. So we're down to 11. Pwn gets to learn. Although I don't think there's any lesson that's particularly devastating for us. Gets another pest summoning. Alright, so we did not pick up Jossi. So it probably means we play another Swarm and Fable Passage here. And we should be able to Swarm the opponent next turn. Opponent takes it.
And we can crack another Fabled Passage. So at 11, I feel relatively safe. Double Apprentice. But they don't have enough Sacrifice Fodder for Plumnipus to be lethal. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty decent hand. Fetch up an island, turn one. And then we're looking at Apprentice opt to hit our land drops and then we'll use the opt itself to try and find some ramp cards like Cultivate. Could also decide to play Swarm on turn three. Although against blue reds, that's maybe not the best idea. So kick things off with an opt. Trigger Apprentice. Opponent discards a Magma Opus. And don't really need Castle Garenbrig. Could also bounce the treasure token here, but if our opponent's plan is to ramp out a 4-drop, we can just bounce their 4-drop. Now if they have the ward 4-drop, I guess it's a little different, but yeah, it's just going to be in a freed flame painter, which we can bounce. I'm going to do that right now. Sets the opponent back a turn. And now I'm probably okay running out Scoot Swarm plus Fabled Passage. Or I can save the Fabled Passage. Yeah, that's probably better. And then next turn play Journey. So I'm hoping they just replay their Flame Painter and then next turn I can play Journey. Put double Fabled Passage in play, which will enable Landfall a whole bunch. So, yeah, let's go for it. Make some swarms, and then we can still enter the royal afterwards. I still get to play land for turn. Well, assuming no sweepers, we should have this. Prismari command. It's gonna make me loot. And another Magma Opus hits the graveyard. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. This is probably a hand where I fetch on turn one, so we can go Apprentice into Cultivate. And then Apprentice will play nicely with our Journey to the Oracle to put a bunch of lands in play for Scoot Swarm. Turn one Ruin Crab, so up against the mill deck. Well, let's see if this time we stand a chance. Turn two Gargoyle, so at least they're planning to attack us a little bit. Lotus Cobra is interesting, probably still cultivating here. And then next turn we can think about playing Cobra 
into a land, into journey. Although our opponent is keeping up counter spell mana. Well, we'll play the Cobra. If they counter it, we can still play Skewed Swarm. That resolves. Yeah, we'll go with a journey here. We miss out on a bunch of Skewed Swarm triggers, but it will give us a big mana advantage, which is probably still worth it. And assuming this hits, I can still technically play Scoot Swarm afterwards. Our opponent counters a journey. So now we can hope to resolve our Swarm instead. And we still get to trigger Magecraft anyway. Even if our card gets countered. So now the plan is Scoot Swarm, Fabled Passage, Journey. Although, looks like they have yet another counter in hand. So now I'm more tempted to... Leverage or into the royal. Yeah, I could into the royal for four mana. Put on might counter it. Then I get to go fabled passage into skewed swarm to make sure that resolves, but at the same time we're dying to the gargoyle. So maybe I'm fine with the skewed swarm getting countered and the opponent might let it resolve anyway. They do. Play fabled passage. And then I want to use my Into the Royal at instant speed, so they don't get the chance to use their mana end of turn here. And we can start attacking. The opponent takes two. And we'll pass a turn, and then I probably put a stop on their upkeep. To bounce Gargoyle. That way, we don't give them the chance to draw into another counter if they didn't have one in hand. But it seems likely that they do. But now they're forced to spend the mana in their turn. Yep, yeah, there's a counter. Alright, so we're still taking 5 down to 5 here. So we'll need to draw another into the royal, basically, since we're not killing them before the gargoyle gets in one last time. Another apprentice is not going to do it, so I think we're just dead on board. Can play Fable Passage, crack it. Don't have a way to trigger Magecraft on Jodzi. And even though we can make an impressive amount of Skewed Swarms here with... Our journey, we're still dead to the flyer. So yeah, flyers are definitely a weakness of our deck. But uh, I guess we'll show what we could have done here. Hit some more lands. Put those all in play. Make a whole bunch of mana. Crank Fable Passage to make even more Skewed Swarms. So we just needed one more turn. Alright, GG's. Gargoyle gets in for lethal. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Sadly, we'll be forced to fetch up our forest to play turn to Cobra instead of saving the Fable Passage until after we played. Facing a Giganta deck. So we're looking at turn to Cobra and then hopefully it survives so we can generate extra mana with it. Alright, opponent on the Black Green Pests deck. Which, you know, if we can set up a big Skewed Swarm, can usually overwhelm the opponents. Our hands so far not looking great. Could really use something like Cultivate or maybe a Eureka moment. Since we're a bit light on ways to trigger Magecraft and we don't have that much ramp. 
especially now that we picked up a second Jauntsy. It's going to be a Wither Bloom Apprentice. Another Apprentice, so we can play double Apprentice here. And then we can always cast our Journey to the Oracle and then with the Apprentice triggers we can still potentially put some extra lands in play. Although we do need an extra green mana, so any lands to make a green mana with Lotus Cobra. Sedgemore Witch on three. Alright, so our opponent's got a nice start. Into the Royal. I guess I'll have to cast for two mana here. And then we'll do it now. So we can hit our land drops with Apprentice. We'll bounce the Witch. And then a Castle Garenbrig. Plus another Castle Garenbrig. Alright, so we get to play Skewed Swarm. And then next turn I can maybe cast a Journey to the Oracle. Don't really want to trade, although my opponent might just take it here. Yeah, maybe that's greedy. I'll just stay back. Because I could still use Double Apprentice and Cobra. So we'll see if they can answer the Skew Swarm here. If they can, then our plan is just ramping into Jauntsy for card advantage. Otherwise we might be able to go off with our Swarm here. Alright, opponent replays Witch, makes some 1-1 one -one tokens. And an Opt to draw. Alright, so we'll cast Opt first. Trigger Apprentice a bunch. Although that's a miss. And uh, I guess we grab another castle. Or I could grab Pathway and then play Pathway to trigger Landfall. And then I actually don't mind an extra forest here. If you put a Pathway in play with the Journey to the Oracle, then it will put the front half in play, just as a side note. So double Apprentice. And that's going to be a lot of landfall triggers incoming. And our opponent concedes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. We are missing blue mana, but Lotus Cobra can potentially fix if it survives. Opponent on a Lurus deck. Hopefully it's a cycling deck and not some sort of mono black enchantments deck, which will have plenty of answers for my two drop. Swamp is not a good sign. Falmar Knights. Well, still gotta try to play the Cobra here and then if it survives we can cultivate and still play Apprentice afterwards. Maybe a Black Green Death Touch deck. Alright. Ram through is fine. At least they won't have a ton of recursion out of the graveyard in terms of removal. Grab two islands. And then next turn we can go Apprentice into Cultivate. Shovel. Alright, at least there's no Finn in play yet. Although if they play one next turn we could be in trouble. And we'll grab one of each. Alright, so next turn we could already cast Jotzi thanks to our castle. And it's not too interested in trading. Opponent adventures Falmar Knight and plays it. Alright, so I think I'm okay playing Jauntsy here. Could take a different approach where we Eureka Moment in the hopes of finding Skewed Swarm and then use Journey to make a million tokens, which probably wins us the game. 
Although if we don't find Scoot Swarm, I think I'm better off going Jotzi first. So I need to play my land first. And then... Castle plus two islands gets our Jotzi in play. I think I still keep Apprentice back in case they do play Finn next turn, then I'll be forced to trade. But for now I'm okay taking four. Our opponent can't have Blightfang in their deck since they have Lurus as companion, so falling low on regular life is not as much of a concern. Ooh, Skewed Swarm. Now we're talking, we can even pick up Jotzi just to cast Journey if we want to. But, uh, yeah, let's start by playing Skewed Swarm. Playing Eureka Moments with an extra land in play so we can pay for Jotzi's ability. Apprentice misses, but we find another Eureka Moments. So this is gonna be sweet. Hit Fabled Passage, oh yes. Put Fable Passage in play. And our opponent concedes. Well, you can kind of see how this can very quickly snowball once we get Jotzi and Scoot Swarm in play. Eureka Moment, a perfect combo here, as it also gives us the mana to keep using Jotzi's ability. And then Fable Passage, the cherry on top, onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Gonna fetch turn one, get a forest so we can play turn two Cobra. And if Cobra survives, good things will happen. All right, let's see what we're up against. A Mardu Triome. Well, it doesn't bode well for Cobra surviving, but we have a backup at least. Opponent foretells, could be a Doomscar, which they can cast next turn, so I don't necessarily want to play more Cobras and Apprentices here. Where does that leave me? Just casting a Cultivate. Sure. Yeah, it is tempting to play another Cobra here, but if they Doomscar me next turn, I think I'll regret it. And one Cobra in play is still quite useful. That's going to be Heartless Act for now. And Doomscar, to be fair, is going to be a long-term issue as well. Since uh, it deals with a board of Scoot Swarms. So I guess now if we bait out a... Doom's card's not the end of the world, or is it? I really want to untap with Jotzi, which at least can be bounced in response to removal. And the only way I can ramp into Jotzi is with Cobra in play. So I think that means I don't want him to cast the Doom's card yet. Merchant to discard. Discards Velomachus. Alright, so this might be a reanimator deck instead, in which case this could be the 4 mana reanimation spell with Fortel. And our opponent's missing land drops, so. Alright, change of plan. Not afraid of Doomscar anymore. And if I play Fable Passage, I should be able to play Jonesy. And if we get to untap, we get to trigger Magecraft with our Cultivate. Opponent found a fourth land, but it's another tapped Triome. So they won't be able to reanimate just yet. 
thrill discards thrilling discovery. So next turn we can expect Velmachus to hit the battlefield. But in the meantime we get to have some fun and into the royal perfect answer to Velomachus before it gets a chance to attack. So I want to make sure I keep into the royal mana available next turn even if it's unkicked. So can I afford to play apprentice? Uh, I guess I can. Play cultivates. Might want to play fabled passage first in case I need more mana for Jonesy's ability. And then a Cobra will play. Get to enable landfall a bunch. And Jelsey can start attacking. And then we can play kicked into the royal in the opponent's turn before Philomachus gets to attack. Alright, it's going to be an unbreakable bond to reanimate instead. Opponent's not going to be too happy with this. And then we don't have the mana for another into the royal, but that means we've got a backup. And our opponent concedes, and we can have a look at the Exiled Fortel card here, and indeed it was a return upon the tide. Sweet. Alright, so we got to see our Jadzi's Jaunt deck in action, and some of the games we cast Jadzi as a creature, some of the games we cast the Sorcery instead, which is great alongside Scoot Swarm. So yeah, overall a deck that can do some powerful things. It is weak to aggressive decks, especially ones that have a lot of flying creatures, since Cute Swarm doesn't block too well when it comes to flyers. But uh, yeah, overall, definitely a fun deck if you've got the cards for it. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. 